Hi everybody, this is Dorothy Kilty, and I've been off for quite a while. Um, haven't been feeling real well, but I am now going to try and start filming on a more regular basis again. Um, I want to thank you to Paulette Slade, or her Facebook group is Printables for your junk journaling with TLC, and her Kofi page is TLC Creates Vintage Junk Journal Printables. Um, I will put the links below the video, and my YouTube is at D.A. Kilty. Okay, what I'm going to show you today is this idea, this way of doing this, came from Melina Pilant. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Uh, it's a four-pocket mini fuller, and it's part of her uh, playlist, MS Scrap Busters. Now, I thought this was such a clever way of um, the way she made the uh, um, the windows come out. So, uh, here's what, this is a, um, it's actually a, an old skin marking pen or pencil. But what you need is any kind of a pen or pencil that will rub off or something. So, not something that's permanent. Uh, a gel pen may work or something. Um, but what you're going to do for this is you're going to take this and go around the window with the pen. Like this. And this one up here too. Okay, and now we're going to look at the size of this. Now, I'm using one of Paulette at TLC um, Creates Vintage uh, cover page. Um, as a, I, I love to use these as scraps. So what we're doing here is we're really rubbing. Oh, shoot. Watch me have gotten this wrong. Darn it really rubbing hard to get the lines from where the window is to the back of this paper. So if you take a look at this, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it. Oh, how about if it doesn't even work? Let me go over these one more time. A little darker. Part of the problem was um, when the paper slipped because I wasn't holding it good, it smeared. And it probably smeared the lines on the window as well as the ones on the paper. Now, whoops. Okay, let's try this again. We'll put this down. So instead of having a measure or anything, what this gives you is the exact size and placement of the uh, windows on the envelope. So I'm not sure if you can see these lines here going around. So now all we have to do is take our little pointy scissors and cut these out. Um, so I'm just taking, poking a little hole in here. Not a bad idea to cut inside the lines so that you're actually going inside the window a little bit. I reorganized my workspace here a little bit, tried to make things um, so that I could find them and get at them easier. And then, there we go, and you can see this window is gonna fit right over this space. Okay, let's get the bottom one out as well. 
And again, I'm cutting inside the lines a little bit. I love this that you don't have to measure. I'm not good at measuring. I'm just gonna take a baby wipe and try and wipe this off. Comes off the plastic fairly well. It doesn't necessarily come off the uh, paper well but that should be covered up anyway by what we're doing here. I also tried a drawing pencil, a dark um, drawing pencil, and that seemed to work well too. So uh, the black edges here, in a way, just give also give a um, little reinforcement. Now the way we're gonna do, glue this, is to put the glue on the paper around the windows, okay? Not too close, because I don't want it, you know, peeling out into the windows. You notice that I tore the envelope open and this edge is torn, but I'm not too unhappy with that. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, as soon as I put this pin back in here, By the way, I'm using um, Fabri-Tac glue. I just moved it into a Sugar Bell bottle. Now by putting the glue on the paper and then placing this around the windows, and pushing it down, now we have this glued to the windows with the back open and showing. Okay, now I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut this down to start. Okay, and then this is gonna be folded in half to make a little folio very small folio with um, inside here. So you have, you now have a pocket here and you have a pocket here. And then we can put two more pockets here and we'll be decorating it. <laughs> now another little trick that I do that I think is kind of fun, is if you take, especially a collage sheet, and these are just um, regular address labels. Um, and what I've done is I printed the design onto the uh, label page, uh, collage sheet or different things. And so what it does is it gives me a uh, different pieces to stickers to use as a as a collage. So I did put a couple of them on here. Um, and I'm gonna make two pockets here. The first one is going to be, um, and if I didn't mention this, I'm sorry. I'm using papers and things from Paulette Slater's 
either a Facebook group or designs that I have bought um, from her uh, to make these designs. So um, this pocket will go here, and then this is going to be cut at a slant, and it'll make a tuck spot. So before I put these on, what I want to do is decorate this page. Um, I Oops, I didn't do a very good job of cutting this. Let me trim this off a little bit here on the bottom. There we go. Now, this can go right here. This, because of the way I tore this, um, the flap is still on. I'm going to take it off. So, by taking the flap off or by just doing this more neatly and cutting the flap off, now we have this page, um, you know, the pockets. It's easier to see and get into. And across the top of here, this is a good place to use some of these stickers. So here I can take these and just put them here. I don't really care if they're exactly the same. Um, all I want is to make this a little bit more, a little prettier. When they open them. And um, depending on what was here, you could Pull this over um, onto the other page. That could be one way of doing it. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is simply... Well, actually, let me see what it looks like. I think I am going to fold it over. It just reinforces that edge a little bit. I should have done them one at a time, probably, but this works. It makes a little border on the top of this page, okay? Now, we have this here. This is going to go on this side. And then I'm going to put another piece on this side. They, I don't think these two halves need to be the same. Although you could use the same ones if you wanted to. So once again, um, in this case, let me just cut a little bit off here. Once again, I'm going to put the glue around the edge of this. This time I'm going to try and get it a little bit closer here. And I'm going to cross over this a little bit. Um, and here we come back here. Boy, I'm bad at putting this glue on, aren't I? Okay. Now, if you're worried about your glue showing through or anything, you can kind of smush it together, but I'm fine with this right now the way it is. Okay, so now we'll put this here. So once again, because I didn't go over, um, didn't put the glue on the back of this, I can now cut away this top edge. Okay, and there's that background. Now for this background, I'm just going to use a piece of a music paper. Again, I don't care 
if it's um, if it matches. I think it actually adds more interest when it doesn't. Here, and I want to go higher than this. Now I'm going to put it here. I'm going to glue it here, and then I can trim the edge here. So this, okay. Okay, double checking real quick to make sure that I haven't knocked that camera off as I've been known to do. Let's see, I could just go over this edge a tiny bit. If you find that something isn't sticking, you can always put a little bit more glue, tuck a little bit more glue under there. Okay, so once again, I'm going to cut this away and we will Okay, so now when I fold this over Now, once this folio is done, it can be tucked around a page, it can be tucked into a pocket or something. There's a lot of different uses for it. Okay, so now here we have this. And we need to have... Here's our little pockets. Now this pocket will go right here once it's decorated. And this one will go over on this side like this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and decorate this and I'm just gonna collage on these. Um, I'm, the one that's gonna go over on the right, I'm gonna put some music paper down. To me, this will help um, balance the two sides together. I'm gonna go ahead and actually put the these two labels on to cover up something that I didn't like the the labeling names from from one of the kits that I bought from someone other than Paulette okay so <clears throat> I'm cutting this corner off. So there's two things here. One, if you, uh, you can reinforce this, the, your paper if it's too thin and stuff. This is actually a really heavy paper, light cardstock, but we'll go ahead. The other thing is that by making little um, edges here. It gives a little bit more room, a little looser on the page on the for the pocket when you put it on. And that's going to give you a little bit more flexibility there. So um, I'm going to this one here will be glued down, this is the top, 
So I'm reinforcing the top of this pocket. Take a little bit more abuse. And then these I'm going to glue. Actually, this one will be glued down because I want a tuck spot. I do not want um, a regular pocket per se on this one. Okay. Okay, so now I will put glue along the bottom here. And along here. Okay. Okay, this is off of a page of different kinds of written pen and pencil embellishments with the writing. I just thought it was so pretty. So I'm going to cut this off here. I'm also going to use one of these. I like this. If you fold them back, you can kind of see what the design is. So let's use this butterfly right here. We'll have this. And then I'd like something to go okay. I'm gonna take this and put it this way. And then we'll put this here. Oops, how about if we put it right side up? So I think that's pretty. Okay. So this will be fine for a card for there. Now we need something that's gonna go in the back of this to show through these windows. Now there's a couple things that you can do. You can put something uh, back here so that even when you pull your card out, you still have a pretty design there. However, I kind of like the inside of this envelope. I think it's kind of cool. So um, I'm going to just leave that be. Um, so let's see. We need... So I bought at a, um, at a charity shop. I bought a gardening book. And... What I really love about it is that it's it has like these grids and these lines that you can use. So I, I use these for backgrounds, um, for cards and uh, tags and things like that. It gives you a writing space. It's a little stiff. It was a, a really nice firm paper. They wanted you to be able to plan out your garden on these grids. And it was actually a Mary Englebright, so the pictures in it are fabulous, too. Okay, so I'm going to cut this. I'm going to cut it up this line here. Okay, let's just put it in there and try it. 
Okay, so when this card is in here, um, boy, did I do a good job of smearing that black, didn't I? I wonder if a racer would have done better. would have been a lot better to take it off. Well, I hope somebody likes the grungy look. Okay, now I'm going to cut this off here. Now, if you wanted to glue it on the back side, you would cut the inside of this. If you're just going to use it as a card um, to go in, a journaling card or something, then you would leave it out. Okay. Let me see. I don't think this picture is quite wide enough. Nope. Oh, actually, it can go this way. It can go this way. Okay. So, let me just cut the bottom of this. The picture would normally, I think, go up here, but I think that it looks just fine this way with the, the flowers. As if they were still on the bush and coming out. Okay? So let's put the glue on this. see what it looks like in there. Okay, I think that's kind of pretty. And the top of this, because it sticks out here, you have a place to grab it and pull it out. You could also put a tag or, you know, a, a tab on the top of it, but I think that's just fine. And now we've got a journaling card there. Um, you could put something pretty on top there to make it more interesting. Okay, now we have this. Now I'm gonna round these edges. This is actually, um, Cuts the edges and also embosses them a little bit, which is kind of pretty. Okay, there we go. Once again, I'm going to collage over on top of this. Vintage uh, um, tags that I think are kind of cool for my collaging.
need to put that pin back in there. Okay. Let's put this here. Was I kind of tore it so it kept away from those edges? And now let's use another one of these. Okay, we put this around here. Now we have a pocket right here. This picture can go in this tag. I'm going to trim it a little bit because I want it to be uh, not stick up over the top of the folio. Let's figure out. I'm going to cut off, I'm going to kind of, I love this hat, so I'm going to cut off the top of the top of it so I make sure I get all the hat in. Let's do this now. Sure we get to the edge. Okay. Glue this on. Ooh. I do this wrong now. Oh, that's okay. Okay. I don't cut very good straight lines in case you haven't noticed. Okay, and now we can put this here. And we have a journaling card in there. Um, what's left to do is decorate the front if we want and fill up the pockets. Now this could be glued in this way. You could not decorate the other side. 
and have it be glued in this way. Again, you could tuck it around a page like this and maybe use a paper clip to put it in. You could put a clasp to maybe a button and string or something to hold this closed. You could put a little um, couple pieces of Velcro here so that it would just hold clothes that way. Um, or magnet. And there you have a folio. Uh, decorating it, the rest of it, uh, I'll show you in another one when I finish that. But really it was making the folio and showing the super cool way to get the holes lined up for these. Okay? I want to thank, once again, Paulette for her wonderful... Um, she has some free designs on her Facebook group. And she also has beautiful kits that she sells. I've done both of them. She has a monthly club where you get um, emailed um, images every day. And she'll have different things for those. And she will also send them to you per request if she can find them. So lovely stuff. Uh, it's been a pleasure being with you again today. And please come back and visit me again. Please look excuse me, like and subscribe. And I also want to thank Melinda Pilant for the great video. Thank you.